Hello everybody, welcome back. This is the third part of uh, week 10. Uh, we're trying to um, sort out some other issues about uh, the relationship between S domain and the Z domain. So just a quick review, we mentioned the two different ways uh, we go from S domain to Z domain. So the first method is we try to maintain the in pulse response to be the same. So this is basically you do a directly um, S domain to Z domain transfer. The second method is uh, using zero or holder. This is a situation when you actually have a um, digital to analog converter. Uh, these physically those devices are there. So you go from S domain to Z domain, but it's not just a transfer function. You get your zero order holder multiply in the front and then do the Z transform from there. Actually, there's many other um, different methods to do this and none of them actually can get a 100% perfect mapping. So when we do the mapping is kind of, uh, um, you can only make sure certain location um, in the S domain and Z domain are matched. The rest of the place is going to be distorted. Uh, in our analog, it's very similar to drawing a map for the uh, world. So our globe is actually on a sphere. So if you're going to draw the world map onto a paper, some place is still proportional where it is, and the sizes are proportional, but other places um, are going to be distorted, uh, such as like uh, the countries on the north and uh, close to the south pole, their size is uh, much bigger than it looks like. And the countries near the uh, equator looks um, smaller than it is actually is. So this S plane to Z plane mapping is quite similar. Things are going to be distorted. In this um, um, session or this part, I'm basically give you some backgrounds on the relationship of S plane and Z plane and the actual method to do the mapping will be introduced in the next session. So as we know the most uh, um, kind of uh, points of our interest are the poles and the zeros of the transfer function because these are the kind of uh, uh, that determines the main feature and determines how the system performs. Other locations we can say this is not accurate, it's okay, but these uh, poles and zeros are the um, locations that we want to make sure they are the same. Um, if you wanted to say get an exact mapping from S domain to Z domain. So generally speaking, in S domain, um, S equal to sigma plus J omega. So we normally in S domain, we draw, we draw the horizontal axis uh, rear component, that's sigma. Um, imaginary axis uh, omega, that's the um, imaginary part. And the uh, S is going to be a point in the S domain. Uh, accordingly, uh, we already know the relationship between S and Z is Z equal to EST. Uh, that's what we um, already know from the uh, week uh, week uh, nine. Um, so we just put that S into this equation. So replace that. You got E um, power of uh, sigma plus J omega T. And if we know the uh, Euler's formula, this is the imaginary part. This is the real part. So adding of the on the exponents becomes the multiplication of the real components and with imaginary components. And from the Euler formula, uh, E power of uh, imaginary number can be converted to say cosine omega t plus j sine omega t. So this is uh, its uh, magnitude and this is its uh, angle. Okay? So you can see this is how big the z is or how far away z is from origin and this omega defines its uh, orientation in the z domain. If we draw the z domain, 
this Z domain. So it's kind of you go from X, Y domain into a kind of a polar representation, right? You got a polar coordinate with uh, the E sigma T represent how far away it's coming from the origin and uh, with that omega t represent its its theta. So there's a, a few um, important parts that of particular interest, and we want to have a look how do they map from uh, s domain to z domain. So first thing is look at the horizontal axis. Let's just look at this axis. What's the point in this horizontal axis in s domain? Uh, is going to be kind of uh, uh, um, mapped into Z domain. So firstly, let's look at origin. Origin over here. So when uh, sigma and uh, omega both are zero, you've got, uh, oh, I'll write down here again, Z, oh, it's here. So it's kind of power of zero. The E power of zero basically give you one. So the origin over here, 0, 0, actually come here, become 0, 1. So this, this origin, oh, get it shifted. Then we look at all the points on the left hand of, of this origin, on the left side of this rear axis. What happens that is this is represented to E with a negative number power. Okay, because E is a 2.7-ish. So if it's a negative power, it means uh, uh, this number, whatever you got uh, from here, is becoming to be less than one. Okay, so all the points on the left side of this rear axis goes uh, to the inside of the circle from zero to one, with one is actually the origin. Okay. And if we look at the points on the right hand of this real axis, so when sigma is a positive number, so then you got a E um, E with a positive power. As we can see, E is 2.7, so a positive power will make it larger than 1. So any number from the real part of this um, the positive value of the rear axis in S domain goes to on the steer the um, the horizontal axis of Z domain, but it's go from um, one until infinity. So if you just look at this, it's quite um, interesting, right? You see everything from the left goes from zero to one. Everything from the right goes from one to infinity and the origin actually map to one zero here. Right? So that's uh, uh, the map. Now we look at uh, uh, the mapping of the imaginary axis from S domain to Z domain. Okay, so where that thing goes. Uh, so for the imaginary axis, uh, S equal to sigma plus J omega. Imaginary axis means omega, uh, sigma equal to zero. So basically, S is only the J omega. And we got our Z is equal to cosine omega t plus J uh, sine omega t. So this means the absolute value or the size of our Z is always one because you get a cosine and a sine. So it becomes the unit circle in Z domain. So this actually becomes unit circle. So Let's go have a look at the um, this together. So you can see the real axis is still real axis, kind of from zero to to this part. That's your um, real axis. This solid solid line. Uh, the imaginary axis will change another color. Imaginary axis here actually become the unit circle so if you kind of look at s plane um you you can think this goes 
to the infinity positive and go back and to the infinity negative and this all wrapped together. So the whole side of the left imaginary, uh, left side of the S domain is getting wrapped by this imaginary X into the Z domain. So all the left side actually goes inside of the um, circle, um, unit circle in Z domain. And this, from stability point of view, makes sense, right? In S domain, we have the system stable on the left side of the uh, imaginary axis. So this is a stable. And uh, in the Z domain, we know that Z needs to be have absolute value less than one. So this is in Z domain, the stable area. If we remember in the um, lecture week eight, we have tried a few examples when Z is actually larger than one, the um, series goes, goes infinity. When Z is less than one, it gets stable. So from that point of view, this makes sense. And our um, real axis is, uh, where, where is that thing? Uh, real axis here. This left part becomes uh, only a little bit over here. And the right side of the, this real axis goes from one to infinity. So you can imagine this is kind of a wrapping uh, from a XY coordinate into a polar coordinate from um, it's then R and theta, R and theta. Um, because you can you can read from from this uh, in Z domains the uh, the size is uh, related to the this real part and it's theta related to the ratio of the real part with the, um, the imaginary part. So we know the uh, real axis and imaginary, imaginary x where, where those two axes go from S domain to Z domain, uh, what happened to a general kind of a point, say a point over, over here? Where, where does this go to the Z domain? Uh, so to understand that, we use an example. Uh, this is a standard second order system transfer function. Um, with a mechanical system, we normally say omega n is our natural frequency, as natural frequency, and this zeta here is our uh, damping. So the second order system, uh, you can change the omega n and the damping. Um, it can plot into uh, this circle. Okay, with a radius is uh, is the omega n, and the damping will decide the beta here. So normally if you have positive damping, uh, what it ends up to is on the uh, left side. So the system is kind of being damped and going to be stable. If your damping is negative, um, then the system is going to be unstable. It's going to be on the right hand side. Although physically we never have a kind of negative uh, damping for a mechanical uh, system, but for a control system it's possible. And for a particular point over here, S can be calculated like that. So just solving this triangle, pretty much we know that this is omega n, that's beta. So it's x is equal to omega n cosine beta, um, which is just uh, damping multiplied with omega n. And the vertical axis is omega n uh, multiplied with uh, square root of one minus the damping square. Okay? So that, that's a real and uh, imaginary component. So that's in S domain. And we want to look at how is this going to be kind of mapped into Z domain? Uh, so let's just put this into EST. So that's pretty much just these values put in, in here. So you can see this is very complicated. Uh, for the size, it's this is linked to the um, damping and also to the natural frequency. For the phase, it's also linked to both of them. So it's quite complicated. Uh, so instead of getting a um, equation, we can see that uh, some visualization uh, between these two. So let's first look at the 
in S domain, um, what's going to uh, look like. So this um, is uh, in S domain, we call the um, S grid. Uh, that's, that's a function in MATLAB, you can draw uh, this plot. So this kind of the, uh, is a graph that provide you information of like how stable a system is and what kind of natural frequency it is and, and damping. So we refer to the previous second order system. Each one of these circle, each one of these circle represents one of these omega m. Remember that for certain kind of omega m we, we draw a circle. So the larger the uh, omega, the frequency, you get a larger circle. But on each one of these circle, you have the same uh, natural frequency. You call this constant natural frequency line. And each one of these straight lines, so these lines coming from the origin, um, it's a straight line. This is where you have a certain kind of damping because damping is affecting the, seat, uh, the beta here, right? Damping is affect the beta here. So all the system on this straight line will have the same damping. Uh, their natural frequency will change. Okay, so on each one of the circle, the um, natural frequency is uh, constant, but the damping will change. Okay, so this kind of, uh, you you can use this map to analyze um, how stable a system is because you can pre-draft all these circles and, and uh, um, these damping lines. And based on where it is, then you can know this natural frequency and also its damping. Okay, so that's easy for us to analyze. So this should be just a perfect circle because the coordinate is a bit distorted here. That looks like a, a oval, but it should be a, a circle if everything is drawn with the same scale. Uh, we already convert the that S domain to Z domain. So you can see from here, Z is equal to E something multiplied with Z something else. So this is the face or angle, this is going to be our size. All right, so um, it's hard to draw all this, but imagine if somebody did that for us, okay? So it's called a spiral on Z domain. So if we actually have something already, uh, somebody did already did this for us, it's called Z grid. It's called Z grid. You can run this method function actually to give you this uh, prop. So this prop, all these dotted line is some indication of a constant uh, um, natural frequency, constant omega m, or constant uh, damping ratio. So let's have a look. So these lines over here, you can see it's very distorted. This is one kind of uh, um, constant natural frequency line. So any points on this line will have the same natural frequency. Uh, you can see there's other ones like this. So you can see they are extremely distorted, but they all look like, like symmetric to the, um, to the uh, horizontal axis, and they are kind of aligned from the top to the bottom. So that's where we have natural frequency uh, constant. Um, the other line is the constant uh, damping ratio. So if I just draw one of them, this looks like a um, very weird shape, but it's a closed looped shape. So this is where you have constant damping. Um, so in here, everything's highly uh, distorted. So that's uh, the reason when we analyze this uh, S domain to Z domain, um, Kind of a mapping, you you can't really have every single point to be exactly the same. You have to pick those points of interest, normally the zeros or the ho, uh, the, the poles, um, to be mapped exactly. Then the rest of them, we just have to kind of have a little bit distortion. Um, we we have to live with that. 